Hello everyone and uh, welcome back. Welcome to my another playlist. And in this playlist, I'm going to cover architecture related aspects like how to so art architect your application on a tech arc point of view. Like uh, the different kind of architecture we have in the microservice world or monolith world. We are using different AWS component. Okay, for infra, we are using AWS, Azure, all these components. So how can you deploy your application how you can you architect your application so that that application can scale and all these things so mostly this particular series will talk about the microservices and we will just focus on the node.js world so we will try to correlate everything with the node.js because we are going to cover in the aspect of node.js programming language and what all different things what all different ways we can architect our application, what is monolith, what is microservice, what is new in microservice world. It is like a well-known term in the current world where everybody is talking about a microservices, how the Netflix, how the Google and how the other eBay, eBay Amazon platforms are managing these huge microservices. I mean the many microservices, how they are talking to each other, what all different microservice pattern we have, how to architect your application so that you can achieve a loose coupling and your components are independent they can work independently and your applications should scale up accordingly and the downtime of your application should be nullified okay so uh, we'll talk about application development the traditional way of development and the the latest development we are doing so now if you see in the current world we have n number of different tools and technologies you see the serverless from serverless lambda Azure functions which is not needing any server to deploy your functions we have API gateway we have a service discovery all these concepts of all these building blocks are targeting us to build a scalable architecture so we have a different patterns like service oriented architecture event driven architecture CQRS event sourcing pattern or the API gateway how we can manage the API gateway how to limit the request coming from a different services okay how to build a different set of microservices because microservices are independent they can be built with any programming language you just need an interfacing layer to talk to that microservice microservices should be uh, independent of each other they just have their own data source they should be talking to one another through a different mechanism okay so we'll talk about pros and cons of microservice architecture, how you can scale it and the future of uh, microservices, what all different options we have like serverless uh, and the cloud computing using AWS and Azure. Okay, so this is traditional way of uh, development happening earlier, which is we are calling as a monolith. So we are building a huge applications and we are dividing that applications into set of modules. Monolith means you have a client side code or you have a server side code at the client side you have many modules at or if you talk about the server side code you divided the whole application into multiple modules so like module 1 module 2 module 3 module 4 so it's like a monolith your complete ui is talking to one monolith architecture which is having everything from start to end for your application flow so what what are the disadvantages of the monolith sometimes Having a monolith is also a good thing where you see a lot of complexity with the microservices and too much communication is happening. So whenever the new code is added, we have to identify the impact on the other modules. So if you are a new developer, then obviously you will see a trouble in understanding the whole flow. If you have just auth microservice, you just need to understand only how authentication is working. Notification microservice, if you wanted to add a new code, you just need to understand how notification microservice is working. Here, if you are adding a new code, you have to understand the whole module structure, their dependency, their coupling between one, one to another. If you are changing a module one, is it going to impact module two or not? Okay, and there is a challenge, okay, how your user base grow, how you can scale your application because you have written thousands of lines of code in the modules. Okay, then you just keep uh, adding the more servers for your application. You just keep deploying the same instance of your monolith to a multiple server. So if your user grows, you will keep adding. And now it's all challenges about the deployment because you have to deploy an, on n number of servers. Then you have to think about deployment strategy like uh, different deployment strategies so that all the servers can be updated uh, in scaling manner. Okay. 
so more or architecture has a single code base with the multiple modules modules are divided either by the business features or a different ways it has a single executable deployable library right you can talk about the war file er file or the node js bootstrap file a single file is bootstrapping the whole application so if something wrong goes wrong some unhandled exception comes or some api error comes like 500 or something your server goes down so it will bring down the whole application because it has a presentation it has a business it has a database applications also okay difficulties which we just already talked about scaling become challenging overloaded id lot of code understanding like if i if i had a new developer then he understanding the code for him will be a challenging he will get, take a more time and always there is a fear when you change or when you touch the existing code and you have to do the impact assessment of the code when you are changing it so we are shifting uh, the entire paradigm uh, to microservices from monolith because now applications are growing this is the evolution which happened in the last decade that let's divide the monolith and let's create a microservices where these modules can be independent they can talk to one another through the rest interface or some kind of a uh, rpc interface grpc or any uh, or publisher subscriber mechanism you just need to define a communication mechanism where we are reducing the coupling between the modules so the initial phase what we are introducing decoupling decoupling means we are separating them and al allowing them to talk to each other now later we will take a look on what what if module 2 goes down then how the communication will happen how the module 1 will get the data from module 2 then that that will come into the picture okay the data source of individual microservice should be different this this should not be pointing a single source of data so single point of failure can be avoided these all these things can also be managed from the the infra perspective the single point of failures and all so microservice architecture is an approach of building the large enterprise application with a multiple small units these are called services services are deployed tested independently and can be executed independently now that service would be exposing some data which can be accessed by other services and now how we are doing a intercommunication between services can be happen through different protocols you can create a rest based service or soap based service you can have a graphical based communications or grpc or maybe some publisher subscriber mechanism okay each service may have its own database or storage or some services might be just talking to some other services and giving exposing the data so each service run individually either in a single machine or single container single pod or single docker container single ecs instance or single ec2 instance okay so presentation of microservice architecture different microservices are talking to their own databases and giving us the data and your ui is accessing the data from different microservices but there is always a challenge what if a particular microservice for which the major data on the ui is dependent then what will happen so each microservice is small and focused on specific feature microservice can be deployed independently microservice is adding a loose coupling between all the services which we have developed and deployed okay microservices are easy to scale now we can just create a multiple pod in the kubernetes or we can increase the ec2 instance or we can just increase the con docker containers in the ecs for a particular service that is a scaling vertical scaling by increasing the instance not by increasing the infra of that particular instance so there are many ways of doing it like now we have a docker we have a kubernetes uh, all these infra is available to deploy the microservice and this docker kubernetes are more popular in the terms of microservices because we will have multiple microservices and we need to manage the orchestration of those microservices through different containers so either you use a uh, docker in the productions but again how we can manage the docker container so we can be using this kubernetes and other engines who are helping us to orchestrate and manage these docker containers life cycle okay so deploying your microservices can be deployed in different ways uh, we can use a different uh, a infra platforms either aws ecs or kubernetes cluster on the aws and azure all these things we will talk about first what we will be talking in the series is what all different microservice pattern we have that is my first priority okay we will try to understand the how we can int introduce the loose coupling between the services 
either by introducing the event verse using event driven architecture so we will be just introducing how what is the use case of event driven architecture then cqrs event sourcing all these uh, microservice pattern we are going to understand initially we just talk about how monolith works what is monolith how we can divide is there a use case of uh, dividing a monolith application to a microservice then how we can architect a microservices in our environment do we need a single point of contact using api gateway right do we need a service discovery mechanism for our services to be discovered from the external client how we can set up roles and policies at the api gateway how api gateway is going to authorize the communication happening between different services right all these things are going to be captured my main focus is covering the different microservice pattern which we can also do the hands on with the help of nodejs thanks everyone stay tuned i will be posting more videos on the same